an embargo <laughs> section for 10.30 p.m. tonight. No live tweeting during the broadcast section, please, and use the microphone provided. James. Hi, Anne. Hey. This weekend, are you able to welcome back Destiny Udoggy and Pedro Porro? Um, Destiny, uh, Destiny's a chance, yeah, he's trained, and uh, we'll just see how he pulls up. Pedro is probably another, another week away. And since your last match against Crystal Palace, it's been six wins, six defeats, and three draws. How do you feel like your side has coped during that period? Um, sort of, I guess, uh, mixed in many respects. I mean, we obviously had some, some challenges in there um, in terms of injuries and disruptions and so forth. So I think for the most part, we've been competitive. Has our football sort of... Um, you know, being at the level we want, probably not. But, um, you know, I think the lads' um, sheer effort and will and, and, like I said, competitiveness has allowed us to sort of still be in the position we are. Um, the majority of the squad nearly available now. Is the target between now and the end of the season remaining in that Champions League spot? Well, we got. Well, firstly, we, we do have a couple of injuries. So, Rich, Rich Allison's out for three, four weeks. He picked up a knee injury in the last game, so he'll be out for a little while. We obviously lost. Uh, you know, obviously, Cess had a. Uh, Ryan had a, a bit of a setback, or my big setback uh, after the last game. Um, so, um, you know, we're still down a couple of numbers. Um, but in terms of now and the end of the year, nothing different from the start of the year is to. You know, try and keep progressing our football and, and finish the season um, strong and, and try and keep developing our players in our game style so that we uh, you know, see where that takes us this year, but more importantly, how it sets us up for years to come. Charlie. Hi, Ange. Um, I want you to start off by congratulating you on the, the Manager of the Year Award um, at the London Football Awards. Um, on a personal level, coming into your first season in the Premier League, how proud did that award make you? Yeah, look, um, I think I said last night, it's a bit, you know, it was a bit weird because it's only February and you're cool, yeah, sort of just into March and, you know, I'm not really sure um, where that sort of fits in terms of, um, you know, recognition. Um, you know, having said that, I think it's, it, you know, at least it's, it is an acknowledgement of the work that we've done probably since the start of the year and, you know, coming back off, yeah, you know, a disappointing year for the club last year. I guess, I guess we as a group have, have made an impact. So it's an acknowledgement of that. So you, you you need to sort of um, you know appreciate that and and you know feel honoured that uh, you know um, that sort of um, award, for want of a better word, was bestowed upon me. But um, like I said it's a it, you know we were still got a fair chunk of the season to go and. You know, our sites are sort of firmly ahead. Um, <clears throat> it was nice to be there, though. It's, um, it was a great cause, the Willow Foundation. I, you know, I got to meet Bob Wilson and um, had a great chat with Harry Redknapp, which was which was nice as well. So still a bit of a fan with those things. Bumped into a few legends, so it was still a nice night. And in, in terms of your team, I mean, by the time you play tomorrow, you will have had two weeks between games. So how have you used that time? Have you given the players much time off and has the focus in training been more on tactics or more fitness? Uh, no, we, we, we kind of try to use it as a sort of semi-normal work without a game. I guess they haven't had any time off. Um, we just trained right through and taking the opportunity to try to keep working on our game and, and those kind of things. It um, <coughs> hasn't been ideal, you know, it, it's felt a bit like that all season. It's just been a really disruptive season for us. I think apart from maybe the first sort of 10, 11 games where we were kind of playing regularly and we had a bit of sort of momentum and rhythm, um, you know, it just seems that, you know, we've just had a lot of sort of stop and starts to our season. And, um, you know, obviously we've got a couple of games and then again there's the international break and then, you know, obviously after the international break, at least we know then, that, you know, we'll have some regular football till the end of the year. Um, and, and finally for me, in terms of Crystal Palace, they've undergone a managerial change. Their manager, Oliver Glasner, was at the Wolves game. How hard is, is it to prepare to take on a team who have recently undergone a managerial change, in your opinion? Yeah, look, it's always, um, I guess, a little bit challenging because you know, a lot of you sort of scouting. You try and get some consistencies in play and look at teams um, in recent games. But um, whenever there's a new manager, obviously things adjust naturally you know usually there's a positive effect when a new manager comes in and 
think you saw that last week um, with the way Crystal Palace sort of went about things. Um, Oliver's a, a very well conditional coach. He had, you know, particularly Frank, but he, he produced a really strong team and a real distinct style of play. And I think, you know, you'll probably see elements of that. But at the same time, I still think we're, we're at the sort of stage of our development where real emphasis is still on us and playing our football and making sure that, you know, we bring the kind of energy and commitment to our game that we've uh, shown at times this year, and but also the effort that, that's got us to where we we are right now. So, um, so that'll be our main focus. Hi, Ange. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Um, you mentioned there Richarlison out for three to four weeks. Ryan Sessegnon on setback for him. With Richarlison, I mean, he shows some really good form. So, massive blow, I guess, for you. And with Ryan, I mean, immense talent, but you haven't been able to see the best of it, and we haven't seen the best of it for a couple of years. Yeah, look, um, yeah, look, Richie, obviously disappointing because, like I said, he's been a real key contributor for us. But, um, again, it's kind of our season's gone. We, we kind of get one back, we lose one. So, again, we'll just have to um, compensate for him being being out. Um, <coughs> yeah, with, with Cess, it, it is a tough one because, um, you, know, you know, through no fault of his own, he's obviously worked hard to try and come back. And um, it's always more challenging when, when it, when it kind of happens you know as a series of events and he hasn't really had any reward for all the hard work he's put in terms of his rehab to at least get out there and play and and do what he loves and as you say just show people um you know his abilities so it's a tough one for him but you know he'll get all the support he needs he's, he's had his surgery now and um you know he's still he's still a positive guy and um you know he's obviously been through this before so hopefully that helps him to to come back stronger and get out there and and, and play you mentioned the stop-start nature to the season. You start and then you have that September break, and then you have the one in October, November. You've still got one more international break to come. Would you like to see, as a club manager, the calendar change and all internationals being played, even if we started the season later, so you just had a run, a straight run-through? Oh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think part of the, the reason for us is that, you know, obviously we've got no European football. We, we were out of the sort of the Carabao Cup really early, so it, it, we... You know, obviously we had the, the Chelsea game, um, you know, um, a, a sort of schedule change. So it's just been a combination of things for us. It's not so much the international window. It's just been a combination of things that hasn't allowed us to sort of, see, like I said, apart from the start of the season, have a, a real sort of serious run of games um, for us to build, you know, momentum and a little bit of rhythm within the lads. And obviously we've had a lot of injuries as well, which haven't helped. So it's just been the, the nature of the, the season that's kind of, you kind of hope so a little bit unique and hopefully next year will, will be different. Finally, you're in a battle with Aston Villa to finish fourth. In terms of, I remember Arsene Wenger once saying finishing fourth or finishing in a Champions League place in the, was like winning a trophy. I'm not saying it's exactly like winning a trophy. Would it feel like success to you if you if you did nail Champions League by the end of the season? I mean, I, I, I'm not really sure. I haven't read the competition rules, but I, my understanding is that we're not just battling for fourth place at this stage. OK, Ali. Hi there, Ange. Um, on Cess, is it now, is, is there any chance of him coming back before the end of the season? Or is no, it no, now? he's had surgery, so he'll be out for, for a while. Focusing. And I mean, with him, obviously, he had surgery on the other hamstring, that strengthened that hamstring. Is that the kind of hope now that, I mean, he's only 23, that this now fixes these issues going forward? Yeah, I, I, I'm sort of reluctant to talk about the medical side of it because it's not it's not my field. But as I said, you know he's he's getting the best sort of support and advice he can, and um, yeah, hopefully they they find sort of a, a way to to give him an opportunity. Like I said, to to do what he loves. You know, he's not you know it's through no fault of his own. He's he's doing everything he, he possibly can to to get himself fit and and get him up to be able to physically do what he what he loves to do. And you know, hopefully this helps it. Sorry for another injury one, but Manor Solomon, how's he doing? Yeah, Manor sort of progressing, um, but but still not sort of anywhere near sort of rejoining the group. Um, still got a bit of way to go. Again, it's a bit another frustrating one for him. He, you know, he's been working really hard. He was, you know, he's been keen to get back, and we we, we were kind of hoping for an earlier return date, but it, it's kind of been little things along the way that are, that are sort of setting back. So, you know, fair to say, as we see, he's still a fair way away from the group. And George from BBC, please. Um, 
Angelo, sorry, just one question. You mentioned um, you spoke with Harry Redknapp. I just wondered what he said. Has he enjoyed your team's style of play this season as a former Tottenham manager? Yeah, no, he's he's been really supportive from kind of when I've arrived. I had a little bit of history because, um, you know, he took over Jordan. We had him in a World Cup qualifier um, when I was manager of Australia and we kind of crossed paths back then and we we reminisced about those days a, a long way away from where we are now. But um, like I said, I'd... I enjoy those chats. It's, it's an opportunity for me to, to, to kind of talk to people I've uh, admired from afar and uh, just great to connect. And sorry, just I know you said last night you're, you're not at the level you want the team to be, but how would you judge what you've done with this Tottenham team so far this season? Because the fans are enjoying the style of play. You say you've had your ups and downs, but where are you in this in your rankings of where you want this team to be? Well, it's 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 hard because, I, I, like I said, I've said a few times, it's not something that I kind of measure as we go along, but I, I just know that we've just we've got a long way to go with the kind of you know, football we want to play and, that, and even where we are in terms of the squad. We've still got a lot of work to do. Um, have we made progress? Yes, I believe definitely we've made progress from where we were at the start of the year and you know, you don't lose sight of that because a lot of people have worked hard to get us to kind of the position we're in right now. But you know, for, for what I'm sort of looking at it in terms of where I want us to be as a team, not, not as a, a kind of end point because hopefully that there isn't an end point, you keep improving, but just the elements of the team I want to see, the way we play and like I said, the, where the squad is and, and how we work and the staffing. I just think we've got a long way to go and, and that's also exciting, you know, because we're, we're hopefully setting up a really strong foundation to, to build upon. George, please. Hi, Ange. Um, this sort of two-week break, has it kind of allowed you and the squad to really nail down the key principles again, which sort of felt like we saw a lot more consistently during those kind of opening months of the season? Um, no, I think it's just been a continuation sort of, of what we've been building on. Um, you know, again, like I said, because of you know, it has been a disruptive season and you, know, you don't lose sight of the fact that it's kind of, you know, first year of not just you know, implementing a new game style, the way we train, new players coming in, the squad's changed um, you know, a fair bit anyway. So, and then, you know, when you sort of layer on the, the, the injuries and other sort of disruptions we had from in terms of cohesiveness for the team, um, there's been a lot of factors that have been really, really challenging. So what we've tried to do is just maintain a real focus on, on making sure that irrespective of what's going on, that we keep every day trying to improve you know, the principles of our play. As you said, it's not about so much about reinforcement, just you know continuing on the same road, um, <coughs> on the same path of making sure we're, we're, we're sort of focusing on the right things. And, you know, it's rare that you have a weekend <coughs> without a game. Did you manage to spend any time with the family in London or was you at games watching? No, like I said, we, you try and keep it, you know, pretty normal. So um, we were in on Saturday, last Saturday anyway, training. So it's just really had Sunday off, which is a normal uh, sort of uh, weekend for us. But, you know, still work to be done. And just with Richarlison's injury, um, you've obviously got a lot of attacking options, but not many out and out forwards. Mm -hmm. Does Richarlison's injury kind of open the door for Dane Scarlett, who's had a difficult season, to try and end that difficult season with a, a real contribution to the team over the coming weeks? Yeah, but you know that door's never closed. You know, it's it's you know it's he trains with us every day. You know, so for all the players, they're all in the same boat. That door is always <laughs> open. You know, if if you're waiting for some, you know secret magic door open that doesn't exist the door is always open they have an opportunity every day to 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 put themselves in front of me the coaches to make an impact and then you know wait for their opportunity but um as you said dane's had a difficult season but it's great we got him some game time with the uh, 21s last week i think that was important because when you actually look at the match minutes he's actually played this year it's 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 way too low for a guy um, like him, who really needs some game time. So it was great to get him some game time in the 21s, and um, I think that's sort of helped him as well, and he's trained well this week. OK, we'll move on to the embargoed section for 10.30pm tonight. <coughs> Matt? <coughs> We're quite used to hearing managers say, well, last game, we've got two many games. It feels from, from the first part that you maybe say you'd like more games. Am I interpreting that correctly? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Because, I mean, I think when... You know, again, for us, a club like us who, who wants to, you know, sort of 
when you want to compete, you know, at the highest level against the best, you need a strong squad. To have a strong squad, you need consistent games and consistent game time and opportunities. So, you know, at the moment, if we get an injury, we're liable to throw in somebody who hasn't played for four or five weeks. It just doesn't. It's not easy on that player. Whereas if you've got games, there, there's a natural rotation that you need to make there all the time, and and also gives you a little bit of rhythm. Whereas, um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I had the other extreme last year, the last couple of years at Celtic, we were playing 60 plus games a year, you know, but I found that a lot easier to manage than having less games or, you know, like I said, having a disrupted season like we've had this year. So you don't because Europe's kicking in again for the, the clubs around you. you mm. Don't think you've got an advantage now to the end of the season, and that you've got fewer games. Oh, well, I'm, I don't know. I, I don't think there's advantage or disadvantage. It depends how you use that time. But if you're asking me, would I rather be in Europe? Absolutely, a thousand percent. I'd rather be in Europe at this time playing games. How do you sort of regroup? Intensity is obviously a massive part of your mm. style, and I guess it's very difficult to recreate that match intensity mm. during these long weeks of training. But mm. I guess you've got to try. Yeah, um, yeah, we, we we do we do try and sort of replicate. You, you can't obviously you can't do it sort of exactly the same way as uh, as game day because they're rather sort of you know variants that come into that. But but certainly on a daily basis, we we try and train at a tempo and intensity that's going to be close to replicating what happens on game day. Um, and we've done that consistently all year anyway, irrespective of whether we've got a game or not. You know, what we adjust is the amount of time we're out there. So, you know, if we, if, if we want a less volume session, we just, you know, tone down the time. So, you know, we're out there for less minutes, but the, the intensity and tempo stays the same. So, and I think it's probably been the one area of our game this year that's been, been consistent. And if there's one area of our game that's kind of got us to where we are right now, it has been that, 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 you know, when you look at some of the physical parameters across the league, we've, we've been outstanding. And, and I think that's that's kind of helped us overcome, you know, the lack of, you know, for want of a better term, sort of the, the quality in our play at times. Yeah, yeah. Can you be a bit more specific about what you are, you cover? No, it's just, I mean, most of the, you know, I think most of the high-speed metrics, I think we'd be top of the league. Um, so... And like I said, I think you, you, know, you need something. I mean, you know, I, I, I kind of, I try and paint, paint an accurate picture of how I feel about how we're going, but we're going okay. We're going maybe better than okay. And I think there's a reason for that. And you can look for reasons why we're not going better, but there's some pretty strong reasons why we are where we are as well. Yeah, no, as far as I know, he's, I mean, he's disappointed he's injured and he's not playing. But, um, yeah, aside from that, um, you know, he's sort of into his rehab now. And he's, uh, you know, luckily we've got sort of the international break in between. So hopefully it uh, only means he'll miss sort of the, the couple of games this side of it and be ready for after. Um, oh, to a certain extent, but at the same time, you know, I'm not a sort of one-man show. There's a lot of good people at the club that, you know, and, and you know, a lot of the coaches and a lot of the sort of, you know, medical or sports science staff spend a lot more time with the players individually than I do. And, um, you know, I think they've they've done a you know, great job in sort of helping guys through their processes. Obviously, I'm, I'm there, um, you know, when needed or if I feel like I need to sort of, you know, help the process uh, as much as I can, but also you know, understand that you know, a lot of times you know, players have maybe close relationships or, or, or are more comfortable with, with you know, people they're working a lot closer with on a daily basis. And um, I think that's important, but again, it's not, it's not where we want to be, you know, as I keep saying, I, I still think there's a lot of things we need to, to adjust in the way we work and you know, with, with our environment, which is not, um, you know, being critical of what we've got at the moment, but 
it, it was impossible that everything was going to change in, in eight months or nine months of me working here. So we still got areas we can improve there. Just finally, Ryan says to you on after he had surgery and messaged out on social media in which he basically appealed to fans to be kind effectively and not, not abusing online, which was quite depressing to read. What did you make of that and what does that say about where we're at as a yeah, look, I, I mean, I didn't. I mean, I, I, I didn't read it. You know, they made me aware of it. And, and look, it, it, I guess the easy thing to say is, look, just stay off social media. But I, And it's easy for me to say, and I can do that. But I, I guess for younger people, it's 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 a vehicle for them or a platform for them to, to kind of have a voice, which I kind of understand. Um, but you also, you know, they've got to be mature enough to also know that Sometimes the audience, you know, I, I think, for want of a better term, social media is like walking into the prison yard and saying you're innocent. You're not going to get a hell of a lot of sympathy, you know, and most of it's going to be coming back at you, you know. So if you're kind of prepared for that, then, you know, but if you're, if you're jumping in there to try and feel good, I just, my sense of it, and like I said, I'm not all over it, but you'll rarely come away feeling any really good about yourself even with the most, you know, um, genuine of, of reasons for saying what you want to say or, or, or putting out what you want to put out, it's just that kind of platform that you, you invariably you're going to come away from it probably thinking I shouldn't have said anything. Look, I think it's something you look at sort of from an overall perspective. There's no doubt that also the change in the training regime has an impact as well because it's not it's not something that, <coughs> you know, it's the first time I've experienced, you know. I've, I've, it's happened to me before when I've come into clubs that, you know, the first year there's always a little bit of a an uptick um, in injuries. We, we've, we've had sort of... In the unusual ones this year. I mean, we lost Perisic and Solomon with knee injuries, you know, training at the beginning of the year, which was a bit, you know, random. So you, you kind of, you know, you think, you like think that's not always going to happen. But a lot of the injuries are just due to the, the way we train and the way we play and, you know, players understanding that, sports science stuff, understanding that, medical team understanding that and making adjustments. Some of it, I think, could be the schedule that we just haven't had a clean run at it. Um, so I think you, you, but all those things you kind of review along the way. But <clears throat> more importantly, when you get to the end of the year, I think it's important you, you keep an open mind and kind of look at every area and see, you know, because I, I, I don't think you should be dismissive of it and just think, oh well, it was just a one-off. It's never going to happen again. It, you know, you kind of got to look into it and see whether we can do things better next year, so that you know, if if the schedule's a bit better and we do have, you know, European football, then. Um, yeah, that, that adds a different sort of challenge to us, but hopefully we're better prepared for it. It feels like a kind of high intensity game, talking about the high speed sort of thing. It's the kind of thing you can't just do without the muscle and doing it over and over again. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, there's, and, and, and it's some of it's just, you know, the players getting used to it themselves, physically, mentally, of every day, sort of training at those levels and then performing at those levels. And, um, I certainly, just my experience, I see that over time, you know, they do become, you know, their bodies adjust and they become more resilient to it. But there's also a science to it, which is not my field, that, that helps us along in that way. Um, but I think that is a contributing factor to kind of, you know, why we've had sort of the disruptions we've had. Uh, is, there, is there one thing you change in the schedule to make it a bit more smoother for everybody? Those are playing modes, those are not playing. No, not really, because, I mean, again, I, you know, I, some of our disruptions is uh, self-inflicted. You know, if we had a better run in the Cups and if we are in Europe, then I wouldn't be sitting here doing so. Some of it's in our control. Um, but, you know, like I said, when you look at this year and, you know, I just think we've... I, I just haven't felt... And maybe it's because <clears throat> of the contrast of where I've come from, where, you know, like I said, at Celtic... Yeah, we were having games every three days and, and you kind of get into that mode and it just this year, the start of the year felt like that, you know, we were playing games, it was, there was rhythm, there was momentum there and then just <laughs> since then we've just kind of 
haven't been able to get the same sort of flow and rhythm into our schedule. And I said some of that's our own sort of doing, so we got, you got to you got to accept that. Um, and um, yeah, you know, one way to remedy that is to make sure we 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 get more games for ourselves next year. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, even that sort of this year was kind of a bit, bit weird. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Look, far be it for me to, to get involved in scheduling, mate. I, I'm, I'm good at being told where to be and what to do. Uh. Just actually one more. I'm, I'm the anti-gamers to set about social media, which is probably the most interesting thing that I've ever seen. Have you said that to the players or are you leaving the young people alone? No, I, I, yeah, you kind of give them advice, but I... I, I like I said, at the same time, I'm always reticent to, to kind of dictate because I, I'm not in their shoes, you know. And who's to say if I wasn't, you know, in my early 20s living today as a footballer that I wouldn't be all over social media. So I'll maybe sit there now. It's like when people say to me, well, you know, you can't get kids off their iPads or off their PlayStations. In our day, we're always outside. Well, to be fair, we had no option. You know, if we had the option, maybe I would have been inside too. So you've got to try and have some sort of understanding. But at the same time, I do try and provide a little bit of counsel in terms of, you know, they need to understand that everything you have, you know, access to in your in, in your life, you know, for whatever good stuff you get out of it, there's always kind of a responsibility and understanding and there needs to be a maturity that there's, there's a possibility of not so good stuff being there as well. And you've got to be prepared for that. If you're not, or if you, you kind of, it affects you really badly if it comes the other way, then you're probably better off. It's probably a sense that you're not ready for entering that world. But again, that's that's advice from an old bloke, mate. I don't know how much they listen, and you, you know, I don't know how much of it's right. So, you know, you just, like I said, all I can do is provide counsel, sort of, from my experience. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you.